a few years ago I had a teacher who was incorporating the uh, Franklin method cool. with ballet. Um, and so, like, I guess he gave it to us in a class context. Nice. But uh, yeah, he had, like, a, I guess it was more like imagery that mm. he would have us work on outside of actually doing jumps. So, like, a, like a grapefruit exploding in your pelvis. Or, <laughs> Whoa. Um, like, it <laughs> Sounds awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I can't remember that image specifically. And also, like, the... Uh, he actually, I think he brought in balls and then we had to like bounce the balls. Oh, ah, cool. That's interesting yeah. stuff. Yeah. Sweet. So what do you think that we're going to do today? What do you want to take away from this workshop? Do you have any hopes or expectations? I know you guys already know my spiel on having yeah. expectations, but <laughs> I'm, I'm very curious what you think we're going to do. Like land quiet for me, probably. I have my freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think? I feel like, um, like sense of allowing of a jump to happen. Mm -hmm. I feel like I like stop the takeoff or landing. Cool. Yeah. Great. Well, you know what I'm gonna say. Like, yeah. drop all that <laughs> and just be open to whatever we happen to be doing today. <laughs> uh, so I'd like to introduce the idea of shock absorption. So today we're not necessarily going to be working on the actual jump portion. Consider that for a muscle to contract and explode, like a grapefruit in your pelvis, to make a jump happen, the muscle first needs to contract, or sorry, it needs to lengthen. So like an elastic band, um, if you're going to like shoot this elastic band, you have to lengthen it first. And then because of the contractile nature of the elastic band, it's going to go flying. I'm actually not very good at shooting elastics, but you know, that would actually happen. Um, so this lengthening and this loading, you can call it like loading a spring up or loading a slingshot, this needs to happen when you land the jump, it needs to lengthen. Sometimes what happens, and you used a very nice word, allowing, is when we land a jump, we don't allow that loading, we don't allow that lengthening to happen through our bodies and we kind of just land like, <clears throat> like very stiffly and rigidly. And what we're gonna really be working on today is not the jumping and the exploding part, but the lengthening and the loading part, which is necessary for that contraction to happen. So a lot of the times when people want to work on jumps, they'll just work on that concentric portion, the actual jumping part, like, okay, I'm just going to jump more and I'm going to try to jump higher. And we're going to do plyometrics and things like box jumps and depth jumps where you're like jumping off a box and then jumping up like really high, as high as you can, doing vertical jumps. But if you don't have the ability to actually load the musculature and load your slingshot, load your spring, then nothing's really going to improve. You're just going to get tired and things are going to get sore and things are going to get tight. So this is maybe not the complete picture on how to improve a jump, but I think it's a good place to start. Does this make sense in your brains? Okay, cool. So we're going to work on loading the slingshot today. Cool. I think that's really all I want to say before we start to get moving. Do you guys have any questions? No. Not much to question yet. No. All right. Well, let's stand up. We're going to do a little check-in and see what's going on with you guys today. So, all right. When you're ready, you can stand back up. And you guys have done like two classes today already, right? So you haven't been no mobile. Is it okay if we do a couple of jumps? Nothing crazy, I'm not gonna keep you grand jetés or anything. But just to check in with yourselves and see how things feel right now, we're gonna do some jumps in first and some hops on one leg, like some, I guess, what is that called, ton levé? It's a little ton levé. It's been so long since I've used ballet lingo. <laughs> so you can just do on your own time, like eight to 16 jumps in first. And then if you want a break, you can take a break and then do some jumps on one leg jumps on the other leg. Cool. And just get a sense of how it feels and what the qualities are of your jumps. Go for it. <laughs> There's no right or wrong here. We're just getting an honest appraisal of how things feel for you right now. So anyone want to share how does that feel to do? 
Anything stand out? Any qualities? I feel like it's hard, or I find it difficult to bring my whole foot down into the floor when I'm jumping on. Yeah. Okay, like your heel stays off the floor? Yeah. Okay. And that's probably a cue that you've gotten from teachers is to get your heels down and plie and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. Anyone else have things they want to share that felt a certain way? And I find that like when I actually do that, it takes more time. Mm. But you need to be faster. So how, I guess, like how do you make that work but faster? Yeah. <laughs> well, the whole class would have to be adapted to let you do that. But um, that's not really the case. No, <laughs> <laughs> yep, adapt quick. Um, cool. So if anyone just wants to write down those little details, things that stood out, how it felt today, just some descriptive words. It doesn't matter if you feel like it's totally not important, just because we're going to check in with this again. It'd be nice to be able to compare and see if things are actually improving or just feel different, not improving, but shifting. Alrighty. So, in dance, there is a certain aesthetic that we try to adhere to, yes? Especially in ballet, it's like, turn out your feet. Don't pronate your feet. Don't let your knees go in. Don't stick your butt out, right? You guys ever hear stuff like that? All right. So today we're gonna do all those things. <laughs> so what's really interesting that I've learned recently is, well, it's not really anything new at all, but I'm sure you're aware that the way we move our bodies and dance sometimes aren't necessarily natural. And we lose the ability to accomplish specific joint actions that are not pretty by dance standards because we are trained to avoid them. And for example, let's say, we'll use the grand jeté again. You land a grand jeté. How do you want me to land this jump? Do you want me to land it with my knee out? Do you want me to land with turnout? Do you want me to land kind of straight up? Is that like pretty to do that? Like think about what, yeah, think about like what dance wants me to do. I want to land and probably turn out, right? And have, yeah, like be pretty square, be pretty straight up and down, you know, like not like this. So because I have that image in my mind, I'm probably gonna land subconsciously like this all the time, just being very, trying to open my hip up, be very turned out, trying not to let any excessive movement happen, very controlled. Can you guys relate to that? Does that make sense? Okay, so the aesthetic of dance is kind of like that. Everything turn out, don't let your feet collapse in. Definitely don't let your knee go in because you need turn out. And don't let your butt stick out. Don't let your back do anything excessive, try to keep everything very contained and controlled. And this control perhaps is preventing us from absorbing shock when we jump. So we're gonna do pretty much the exact opposite of those movements. So what we're gonna do first is go through the mechanics that need to happen when you land a jump so you guys can see what those actually feel like. And this is a movement called suspension, which is going to be a kind of a replication of the phase of gait when we take a step after heel strike and absorb shock through our foot. 